Welcome to this on-demand video demonstration about CodeBeamer ALM. Use our chapters navigation to choose the topics you are specifically interested in, or watch the entire video demonstration for a comprehensive guide. You can also read the explanation text for each chapter as a transcript. Before we start our guided tour of CodeBeamer ALM, let me highlight a few main benefits of our market-leading applications lifecycle management solution. CodeBeamer ALM is 100% browser-based integrated application lifecycle management solution. It is available on-premise, meaning that you can install it on your own servers. You can have it hosted by us at Itland Software or as a software as a service platform. With any of these options, we offer a flexible and affordable license structure to suit your development needs. For today's demonstration, I'm going to use the SaaS instance. Before I log in, let's quickly go over the main values of CodeBeamer ALM's application and safety critical or non-safety critical delivery processes. Using this integrated ALM tool, you'll be able to manage all your work items and development processes across the lifecycle in a single platform. CodeBeamer's central repository guarantees gapless traceability, while its collaborative features help increase the efficiency of work across teams. It provides simple access to projects, a user-friendly interface, and flexibly configurable reporting options so that stakeholders and contributors can stay on top of project development processes. CodeBeamer also lets you save and reuse project templates and offers pre-configured templates that can help you get up to speed in no time. So let's move on to the tool and see how it works in action. After logging in, the very first page you'll see is your personal welcome page. As you can see, I have all sorts of widgets and reports here. All of these visualize up-to-date and relevant information and can be fully personalized. Think of it as a personal dashboard, which helps you get up to speed with what's going on in your department's life cycle right after logging in. CodeBeamer uses projects to organize the work being done on your projects. Here in the project browser, you can see all of my projects and a convenient way to filter the list and access project categories. In the middle, you can see my recently opened projects. All of these titles can simply be customized to enable fast and convenient access to your projects. To add a new project, I will simply click on this Projects and then New Projects button right here. The system prompts me to decide whether I want to start a new project from scratch or use a project template that I can upload from my hard drive. You can create and save your own project templates or you can just choose from our list of predefined projects. In addition to templates dedicated to various software development methodologies, Intland also offers pre-configured industry templates. These are a great way for safety critical development teams to start working with CodeBeamer because they contain the artifacts, documents, and basic workflows to support safety critical compliance. For now, let me just upload a template and go on from there. I am now uploading the template file and as soon as I finished it, I'll need to name my project. Once that's done, the system will configure my new projects in a few seconds. As soon as that's finished, we're ready to roll. When entering the project, the very first page you'll see is the project's wiki page, which contains useful information about the project. You can edit this page to show any kind of project-specific information or a summary of your project. Naturally, you can also add pictures or attach documents and use hyperlinks to help users navigate your project. More wiki pages may be added in a hierarchy here to enable collaboration and sharing of important information. Moving on from the wiki, let me introduce you to the concept of trackers in CodeBeamer. Trackers are essentially your work items in CodeBeamer. In other words, these are logical containers the system uses to store and manage your data. They are highly customizable artifacts 
that you can tailor to your needs. You can name them differently, change their preferences, fields, underlying workflow, etc. Trackers are important as they are the vehicles that the life cycle is implemented through. You will define a tracker for different groups of work items like, say, functional requirements, hardware or software specification, test cases, and so on. The system comes with a set of pre-configured trackers, but one thing that you will notice very soon after playing around with CodeBeam or ALM is that it's super flexible. You can very simply update your default trackers to suit your development, environment, processes, or style of working. You can add your own fields for this item-specific information. For instance, if you wanted each of your requirements to carry a risk value, you would simply add a field for this purpose. You can set up these fields any way you want. Not only can you adjust the type and fields of each tracker, but you can also change the underlying workflow. Here, you can see a graphical visualization of the workflow for this tracker. Of course, this can also be changed very flexibly, so the status transitions and guards in your workflow match your processes. You can also set up permissions to make sure that only authorized members of your team can execute certain actions or require e-signatures for specific actions. You can add all sorts of trigger actions to your workflows in CodeBeamer. This enables you to enforce certain processes to avoid deviations. Right, going back to trackers, let's take a look at my product requirements. There's a tree structure hierarchy on the left-hand side here, which gives me a nice overview of all the items in this tracker. To change the hierarchy order, I can simply drag and drop items. You might have noticed all sorts of different colors here. These refer to different workflow statuses. In this case, for instance, we have red, yellow, and green which match the statuses of my workflow. Red for new requirements, yellow for draft requirements, and green for requirements waiting for approval. Let's go and see a close-up of one of these requirements. As we do that, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of CodeBeamer's user interface. The system offers a simple and efficient UI that is easy to navigate. Different views are available to make sure all your stakeholders can conveniently access the information and features they need. The platform offers a smart item structure in high performance in a scaled environment. So, no matter how many artifacts you have, you'll find CodeBeamer is very easy to work with. It also gives you a nice overview of traceability information for each and every work item. In the center here, you can see all the edible fields of this tracker. This is what we call the document view, which shows me all the text, embedded images, and attachments that have been added to this item. The document view gives me all the details, but sometimes that's not what you need. At the upper right hand side, you can easily change between the different views. So let's take a look at these. First, there's a table view, which basically gives me an overview, a list of all my requirements in that tracker without their details, all on a single screen. The document edit view, on the other hand, is like the document view in that it provides more details. But this is a handy one when you want to edit multiple requirements on the same page. As an example, let me just change this attribute right here and save it. You can see that my changes are highlighted here. I could easily make changes to any number of artifacts using this screen. At last, there's the Kanban view. This leads you to those same items grouped by their statuses on the Kanban board. It also lets us use swim lanes to further filter all these items. For example, I will just add a swim lane to filter by the team members these work items have been assigned to. Another great feature is that I can easily change the status of items here using drag and drop. 
As you can see, items on Code Beamer's Kanban boards follow the workflows you previously defined for them. So, for example, in this case, I cannot send this to do requirements right over to the verified status, as the workflow I set for this type of item doesn't allow that. But I can send it to in progress, and if I do, the system will automatically change the status of the requirement to in progress. Sometimes you will need to work with dozens, hundreds, or thousands of work items. No problem. In CodeBeamer, you can mass edit requirements very simply. To do that, you'll just go to the table view over here and choose the specific requirements you want to edit. Or you can just select all. Then you can click more and choose mass edit. Let's change these items so that they are all assigned to another member to my team. Okay, moving on. Let's focus in on a specific requirement. Once you open it up, you will see a very detailed view of the item with all of its fields, comments, references, the item's change history, and more. All changes on all your work items are logged in the item's history and will always be accessible right here under this tab. This feature lets you trace who changed what, when, and also allows you to simply switch back to any previous version at any point in time. Here you can see the first, second, and third versions of the requirement and what has been changed, when, by whom. In CodeBeamer, trackers may also be associated with one another to ensure traceability. These references are easily overviewed on the work item itself, so let's add an association between the requirement and another one. To do that, I will just click on Add Association and pick the item related to this one from the list of recently edited items. Since I can't find the item I'm looking for, I will just use the search box over here. I'm going to search for all the requirements related to lights in the product that I'm developing and hit Go. Scrolling down, here's a list of relevant requirements. On the Work Items tab, I can see not only my requirements related to light, but also relevant risks, test cases, or tasks. Let me just add an association, and as soon as I'm back on my work items details, you can see that I have all the related items right here under associations. In addition to the associations that I just showed you, CodeBeamer also handles references. When generating an item based on another one, the system will automatically create a reference, both associations and references downstream and upstream, can be easily visualized using the Traceability Browser. To access the browser, I will simply click on its icon in the Tracker view. Then I will select the project in the tracker that I want to see the traceability information of. The Traceability Browser enables me to oversee the relationships between any tracker types on multiple levels. I can also easily save my settings or export a traceability report to Office. Now let's back up a little bit. Sure, items in CodeBeamer have all these flexible configurable fields in their underlying workflows, but how did these requirements get here in the first place? Let me show you how you can easily import and export requirements to and from CodeBeamer ALM. So going back to the trackers, I will choose Software Requirements. Let's say that I would like to import some requirements from a Word document. As you can see, 
MS Excel and project files can also be imported. But for now, let me just use a Word file that I will drag and drop from my desktop. First, I'm going to open the document to show you the requirements, which we will see in the system soon. Let me just drag and drop this file to attach it, hit Next, and wait for all my items to be uploaded. All the requirements for my Word document have been imported, and with each requirement in this file, I can change whether I want to keep it in CodeBeamer or reject it. Once I'm finished, I will just hit Save, and as you can see, all the requirements have been added under Software Requirements and have been marked with a red color used for new items because I've just up uploaded them. It's also possible to export all requirements or other items into Microsoft Word, Excel, or Project Documents. Another handy feature is the Round Trip Word Export Import which is especially useful if you are working with different teams or various suppliers that are using systems to manage their requirements. In this case, you can keep on using Word documents as the common format to exchange requirements, but you will still be able to take advantage of CodeBeamer's useful features for managing your requirements. Using the round trip feature, you can easily export all these requirements to MS Office and then send the document over to other teams. They can work on the requirements in a Word file, make modifications, and send the document back. After that, you can simply re-upload the document to CodeBeamer. Once imported, you will be notified of all the changes made in the document, and upon reviewing them, you will be able to individually select the changes you want to import to the system. Speaking of reviews, let me show you another smart feature in CodeBeamer called the Review Hub. The Review Hub lets you easily manage the approval processes of all your requirements or other items. This feature lets you assign any item for review. The selected reviewers will then receive notifications and will see a nice overview of all the items waiting for their approval on a review dashboard. They can review each item individually and sign off on them to approve those items. With the Review Hub, you can manage your reviews simply, efficiently, and in a fully traceable manner. Let me show you how to send requirements for review. To do this, I will just go back to my tracker. Let's say that I would like to send all my hardware requirements to review. All the requirements are listed here regardless of their status. To choose the ones that I need to send for review, I will just use the item filtering feature as I only want to see those items that are waiting for approval. Now I will just select some of these items and look for Send Selection to Review under the More menu. I can name the review itself to make sure I can easily trace it to a certain step in the process. Let's simply call this Review June 8th. Once that's done, I will have to define the reviewers and the moderators for this review. The basic difference between the two is that reviewers are able to go through all the requirements in review and can decide whether to approve or reject them. They can add their comments as well after each section. Moderators, on the other hand, can do all of that but they can also close and finish the review. If necessary, for example, if you have to comply with regulatory standards, you can even set electronic signatures to be required to finish the review. Then moderators will go through the items and either restart the review or finish it by entering an e-signature, which will be saved in a timestamp format. Once I'm done with that, I've created the review. Now the system automatically opens up the review I just created, and I can choose whether to approve these requirements or to reject one or several of them. When rejecting an item, I'll be prompted to add a comment on why I'm rejecting it. Once I'm finished, I will just hit Finish and will be redirected to the dashboard. Here I can see which requirements were approved, 
which ones need more work, and which ones were not even reviewed. Once my requirements or user stories are defined, I will want to go and turn them into tasks for my developers. Let's take a look at one specific user story and work from there. I can see all the downstream references of this item right here. I can add a new reference by clicking on the plus button right here, or I can open up the user story itself and add one from here. In any case, I will want to derive a task from this item so that there will be an association between them. I'm going to name this task Add Audio Format List. I will also add a description, and as you can see, I have some custom fields configured here to add the severity rating and the resolution type. Let me assign this item to one of my team members. I will also specify a start and end date to the task so to make sure it's completed on time. As soon as I save this task, you will see that it's automatically given the new status. Let's go back and see all the software tasks I have specified in this project. As you can see, there's a freshly created task along with heaps of other tasks and various statuses. Some are in progress, others are completed, etc. Naturally, these status tags follow the underlying workflow that I have defined for my tasks. If I want to create a similar task, I can just easily duplicate it so I don't have to go through the same steps of defining this task again. To follow up on the progress of these tasks, I can very easily create a filter that's going to show me all the tasks assigned to my test engineers, test leads, and testers. This screen gives me a granular overview of running tasks. But what if I need a higher level overview of how my development projects is processing? I can just go to the release dashboard and visualize all the processes of this project on a release Gantt chart. Regardless of the methodology used in each of these sprints or releases, I can see all of them on a single screen that lays out my development roadmap. The Gantt chart also lets me edit sprints and releases simply using drag and drop. There is also a statistical overview, kind of like a My Project at a Glance, that gives me a quick progress update on this project. The burndown chart helps me make sure the development is on track. For more detailed information, I can just scroll down and see the tasks broken down by team, type, priority, and status. Let's explore a bit deeper by opening up one of these sprints and switching over to the planner view. In the planner, I can simply prioritize my items by using drag and drop to change the order. The planner also lets me edit the most important fields, just like in a document edit view. On the right hand side, I can see all the details of the specific item. On the left, there's an overview of my teams and how many open items they have at the moment. So, as development processes, my team will have some of these items completed and will want to test those items. So let's talk a little bit about how CodeBeamer ALM helps you manage quality assurance and testing processes. The system can handle parameterized test cases, which can be executed manually or automatically using our Jenkins integration. Test cases consist of multiple test steps where you can define an action and an expected result. Since CodeBeamer lets you carry out product testing on software and hardware components in any kind of product or system. So, let's start with setting up a new hardware test case. When defining a test case, I can define all sorts of configurations for this test case, including priority, pre-actions, post-actions, and others. But right now, let me just name this test case Media Player. I could set up the test steps manually, but for this demonstration, let me just reuse the test steps from another test case. 
To do this, I will pick the test case called 24 bits DSP test from the tree structure on the right. Then I will drag and drop all three of its test steps to copy them to the recently created test case. Once I have my test case with all the test steps defined, I can group these test cases into test sets before executing their runs. Test sets in CodeBeamer are logical containers for test cases. To create a test set, I will navigate to the test set tracker type and then hit the plus button. I will name this test set for media player testing. Let me also add a description and pick some test cases from my library on the right side. I'll be using the media player test case and save this test set. When running tests, I can choose to execute test cases one by one or on the entire test set. But before I do that, I will have to, to accept my test cases because my project is currently set up so that I can only execute test cases that have been accepted. So I will now go back to my test cases tracker where all of my test cases are listed. As you can see, some of these cannot be executed as they have not been accepted. So let me first look for my new test case that I have just created called Media Player and accept this. Once that's done, I can run the test set that I have just created. When creating a test run, I can choose from different test configurations. I can also assign this run to a specific user if necessary. After saving it, I will be able to run this test set. Now I can go through all these test steps that are part of the test cases in this test set. Depending on the test results, I can mark these as passed, failed, or blocked. As you can see, I can also report bugs right from the test run. The test run has been completed, so its status now says finished. The overview gives me a result from this test set, which is in this case blocked because I had one test step that I marked as blocked. As I can choose to run these tests in Excel to support testing across teams, departments, or suppliers, let me just navigate back to my test runs tracker and pick the run in the Excel option. This takes all of my test cases offline and lets me execute the test run in Excel. After opening up the Excel sheet, I can mark the test steps as pass, failed, or block just like in CodeBeamer. Let me save these results and upload the results from the Excel file into CodeBeamer ALM. One more thing I want to show you today about testing is CodeBeamer's handy test coverage browser. This browser lets me overview the test coverage of my requirements and helps me make sure that all my specifications are verified by test cases. To access the test coverage browser, I will click on this microscope icon in the top right corner and choose the specific requirement group whose coverage I want to see. Here, you can see a statistical overview of all my requirements in the chosen tracker and what percentage of them are covered by test cases. These stats also tell me the aggravated results of these testing activities. For a more detailed view, I can just open this up. This way, I can overview all my requirements, their related test cases, and results of executed test cases. The test coverage browser is easy to filter and I can very simply export the results into a Microsoft Excel or Word.
In this Excel document, I also have live links to all of my items and I can see the statuses, coverage, and analysis too. Okay, so far we have covered requirements management, reviews, task management, traceability, test management, and releases. One last feature set of CodeBeamer ALM that I would like to showcase to you is reporting. Since CodeBeamer is a holistically integrated solution, all of its feature sets use a single central repository to store all the lifecycle data. With its advanced reporting features, you can easily set up queries to retrieve any kind of information and visualize it in the way that you find most useful. Since the input for these reports comes right from the central repository, they will always be up to date. When creating a new project, I will first have to choose the input data. Let me pick a project, then a tracker, say software requirements. As soon as I hit go, I will see all the items that match the query. That is all the software requirements in this project. Since that's not very easy to overview, let me group the results by statuses and then filter results based on who they are assigned to. To do this, I will just drag and drop the filtering criteria from the left. Let's see all the items that are assigned to anybody but me. Let's click go to refresh the report. You can see all the items, etc. This looks like a useful report, so let me save this. I will just name this report Software Requirements by Status. Then select the user roles to share the report with. After saving it, I can easily find this report in my list of recent reports or by clicking Find Report and searching for its name. To share the report, I will simply grab the URL and send it to my team members. I can also put this report on my dashboard as a widget. To do this, I will just go back to my project, click the reports dashboard in my wiki tree and just add a chart type widget choosing this report as the data source. I can also pick different widget types, set the ordering and a variety of other options to make sure the report gives me the information I need. Once saved, I will be able to access an always up-to-date version of this report on my dashboard. Okay, so I have this value report greeting me on my dashboard anytime I click over to my wiki section. Let's make sure it also helps other members of my team. To do this, I will set up a job for CodeBeamer to automatically email this report to my colleagues. Let me make this daily report sent to those subscribing to it. As soon as I save this, recipients will get this report in their inbox every day. This way they are always have access to relevant and timely information. This concludes our on-demand intro session to CodeBeamer ALM. If there's anything you're particularly interested in, don't hesitate to reach out to us at sales at .com with your questions. We'll be happy to give you a live customized one-on-one -on -one online demonstration to show you how CodeBeamer ALM could adapt to your needs and help you develop better products faster.